Uh, well, I'll introduce Mary. As you may or may not know, she is our club secretary, so she's kind of a powerful deal around here. She uh, can put whatever she wants into the club minutes. <laughs> Get people elected or not elected, that's what I think. Um, she's also been a registered nurse for nine years, so she's pretty, pretty clever about health and how to stay healthy and who, what people look like when they're not healthy. And uh, she's also uh, an athlete. She's done a couple triathlons and, and is outdoors all the time, all, all year round, right? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and she's an avid sailor with her buddy on Hamachi, Santana 22. So good. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. It's been a while since I've done a lecture, so if I'm rusty, forgive me. Um, if you would like copies of the PowerPoint that I'm doing tonight, um, just give me your email, and I'll gladly send that to you. I have some of the references um, that I use. Um, also, I don't know, it's just, you know, Sometimes it's good to you know, be able to read back over, but I can shoot that to you as an email. Um, as John said, I'm a registered nurse um, for nine years now. Um, I'm also a CCRN, which is a critical care certification. Um, also, I, well, I started out in the healthcare field um, on the receiving side um, with my father when I was a teenager, so I've been around medical profession for a long time, I was a lab tech, I worked as a office person for a few years too, so, um, but I think the thing that mainly drove me into sailing was the physical component, and so that's kind of what this is about, is the fitness um, component of sailing for, you know, it, not only just being able to um, stay healthy for sailing, but in all aspects of your life and how you can integrate that into your physical well-being, both body and mind. Um, as you know, it can be a, a very stressful sport sometimes, you're competing, so it's a competitive sport. Um, just as a, uh, that thing is not gone yet, that's fine. Um, uh, other things that I've done in my life, like John said, I've done triathlons. I you know, did Olympic distance, done a marathon in Ireland. That was a lot of fun. I lived in the fall, so it was nice and cool. And um, also, I've got a couple of kids. They're 28 and 26 years old. They're adults. <laughs> um, and just this, is, this class is going to be mainly a foundation for to build on. This is basically could be a three unit college course that you would take over an entire semester. I'm gonna kind of compact that down into, you know, about an hour. Um, so this would be like your first lecture at a college class and then you would go from that, you know, with your, your curriculum. Um, the other things that, you know, just to help build on your knowledge base, for, you know, if you have, you know, an extensive, you know, physical fitness background, then this will be kind of, you know, just a, you know, remediation. Um, and also just uh, other things to think about, you know, what, you know, things you can add to your already your routine. Um, the objectives of the course, those are going to be um, coming up here. Can you guys go in there? Sure. You got it. Okay. Um, so it will be to uh, just say click really loud. Click. <laughs> <laughs> that works. <laughs> okay, I went to that. And I just want to thank my husband <laughs> that he helped me so much with this, putting this presentation together, kind of proofing it for me. Um, and also, he's my sailing buddy, so <laughs> he puts up with me as crew. Um, so the objectives, um, first, I identify the basics of a healthy lifestyle. So diet, exercise, and rest. Everybody kind of forgets about that sometime in our busy daily lifestyle. It tends to get be one of the areas that gets neglected. Um, the benefits. So, uh, you know, what is going to, what are you going to get out of this, you know, of, of doing all this, you know, extra stuff like eating healthy and, and exercising? 
um, how to set some goals, just basics, and how to get there. You know, what do you want to achieve with your your fitness or you know your physical well-being? Um, and not everybody's gonna go down and do Zumba. No, you know, there's gonna be people that will never step a foot into a yoga class. You know, or they're not gonna go and ride 50 miles in a race. So finding what works for you, whether it be individual or with group, and how to get that into your daily lifestyle. That's huge. So that's the, one of the things that you really want to you know, integrate it, make time for yourself. You're the most important person in this room. That's the thing to remember, is that if you don't take care of that, your own well-being, then you're not gonna get, you know, nobody else is gonna do it for you. Um, and then just some of the basics on how to get started with a routine and, and feel like you're getting somewhere, you know, keeping a journal or also um, just, you know, measuring, you know, like take your weight and then a month start, you know, and then see what happens in a month if you're able to achieve, like, you know, say you want to lose 10 pounds, see if you achieve it, but, you know, realistic goals. This is the mermaid triathlon. We swam around the cement ship. <laughs> this is uh, this is probably one of the most scary swims I ever did. Um, it was cold, obviously, because it's Monterey Bay, but the water is very murky around the cement ship, and there's animals swimming <laughs> in the water with you, and they're not, you know, so like there's cormorants that are like diving. And so that when I was swimming, I had this cormorant like go right in front of me, really close, and I didn't know what the heck it was. And I stopped, and I was just like panicking, and I started screaming. And then they realized the birds that dove off the boat and swam under us, and so then the kayak guys came around and we, we took off again. It was a fun race, though. Um, this was, I think, my second triathlon. And I trained for it for about three months and had a lot of fun. And I got hooked. <laughs> I got I was I was Iron Man material until I, I injured myself. So things that we can't change. Um, age. We are old as we are, and you know every day we get a little older. And gender, obviously, we're born, you know, who we are, and so can't change that in genetics. So we didn't get to pick our parents. And so a lot of us will have predisposition for things such as, um, you know, we're only gonna get it so, so tall, we've got a certain build. Some of us are never gonna be 5'11 and be a supermodel. And we're gonna, you know, but what we have to work with is what we have. And so that's one of the things that's me splashing around in the water. I finally made it around the end, and I actually, it wasn't, after I got out of the water, I felt so much better. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, okay, I got through that part. Um, I've been swimming since I was four years old. My mom basically threw me in the pool at the Watsonville YMCA when I was four, and kind of sat there with me on the side, and I just started dog paddling, and then she figured out I'd better have some swim lessons, <laughs> I guess, after that. And I got hooked. I was actually on my high school swim team and I've swam competitively ever since. So, yeah. Things we can change. Diet. Eating a healthy diet is, you know, the, one of the key components. Basic exercise, you know, you don't have to do a triathlon, but if you, you know, get out and walk a couple miles every day, that can make a difference. Rest and decreasing stress. I can't emphasize the stress reduction enough because it's one of those things that it it produces hormones in your body that can cause like that fight or flight or also can increase your cholesterol and your blood sugar levels and so stress is, is a is a key component to wellness and bad habits smoking drinking too much sitting sedentary lifestyle um, those are things that we can change. Um, the, you know, and then there's in moderation too, but it, it definitely the smoking is a huge one. This is uh, the Santa Cruz 27. This is uh, the Lake Tahoe Nationals. 
I was fortunate enough to be able to go up there and watch these guys. They rented a powerboat. And um, I actually swam in the lake. I, it was funny. I took the boat over to Emerald Bay and went swimming. I didn't go all the way around the island, but I got out there pretty, pretty darn far from shore and realized how cold that water is there. <laughs> and I didn't have a wetsuit on. Usually when you swim in cold water, try to wear, you know, so diet, we'll start with that. Um, a low fat, fat diet, non-processed foods, and decrease the amount of meat intake. So when I say non-processed foods, I'm talking about fresh fruits and vegetables, you know, and not the frozen beans that have been put through a parboiled processor. Um, and then meat intake, you know, lean, fresh meats, you know, that are, you know, preferably organic, so if you can afford it. You know, some people don't buy organics because they think it's too expensive. In our area, we're really fortunate. We have resources from farms and farmers markets and, you know, local producers of dairy even now and, you know, seafood. You go, you go get fresh seafood here. So we, we're very fortunate to have that. Um, complex carbohydrates versus simple carbohydrates. These are your whole grains. Um, anything that's white is basically a simple carbohydrate. So white sugar, white bread, stuff that your body has to break down. The complex carbohydrates are not going to cause your body to expend as much energy breaking them down. Protein, both plant and animal based. Um, you need it, it's a building block for amino acids, so you need your protein. Decreasing your salt intake, the food has salt in it naturally, so if you're adding table salt to your food, it's probably because you're so used to that high level of sodium that you crave it. So it's one thing to look at that you can possibly change. And then vitamins and minerals, so vitamin C, Vitamin K and vitamin D, those are key components for your body to be able to break down fats and sugars. Thiamine and folic acid, calcium mag, and potassium and chloride. These are all in your blood naturally, and when your those are out of balance, your body has to make a shift in order to compensate. So if you have a high sodium level in your blood, your body hangs on to water. And that's a lot of time why people end up with high blood pressure because they've got they're eating a salty, fatty diet, and so their body's not able to break that down. I think Larry is one of those examples of like of somebody who's lived, you know, a very full and and you know active life. He was sailing up to what two years ago. And he was a great, he's a great mentor. And he's also, you know, really smart. He is just like, you know, this one of these people that you're like, wow, you did that, <laughs> you know? So, you know, I just thought I wanted to, you know, share this with everybody. This was uh, uh, when the Clipper uh, around the world race stopped here in Santa Cruz and he took us out when they, they left. It was a lot of fun to go out there with him. And, you know, this is, you know, also, um, you know, it's one of those things where if you look at can't change your age, but you can, you know, if you stay active, you can still keep doing things, uh, you know, and moving, you know, if you keep moving, you, you know, keep using that. Um, so if your weight is, if you're over, like, say, 30% BMI, that is one of the things that the doctor will talk to you about. Obviously, when you get started with any type of diet or exercise plan, you want to go and get a checkup with your doc. It's crucial because they're going to do some lab work and they're going to say, well, you know, your cholesterol's here, your blood sugar's, you know, high or low. These are, the, you know, things that you can address. So getting a physical is important. And so what you need to look at is if you want to lose weight, you need to decrease some of your caloric intake and increase your activity. But if you want to just keep your weight where you're at, you keep activity and diet the caloric intake in balance with your activity levels. And this one thing to think of, like a thousand kilocals equals a kilogram. So a kilogram is 2.2 pounds. 
So that's one of the things that you really, you know, if you think about that, how can I burn a thousand kilocals? That's a lot of activity <laughs> that you're talking like you would have to go and run a marathon, basically. So you're not going to be able to lose, you know, and you would probably drop a couple of pounds too if you ran a marathon. Um, and also rest and recovery. After any physical exertion, you know, getting a, you know, a, a good day of rest in. You're going to do, you know, exercise three, four times a week and then rest a couple of hours. Um, the benefits to all this is you get your blood pressure into a normal range, you get your cholesterol levels into a normal range, and your blood sugar is balanced. You don't want to have too high or too low. Decreasing your alcohol intake. <laughs> uh, you know, everything in moderation. And um, it really, there, there's a lot of stuff out in the media about if you, you know, alcohol in, in you know, small amounts for men, it would be, you know, two glasses a day, women one glass a day. That's what the current USDA recommendations are. So, um, just a little bit of background of what's happening with your body when you eat and where those calories are going. So, your body produces some enzymes that break fats and sugars down and the, the uh, liver produces the um, lipase and insulin and amylase and the liver breaks down um, the fats. So it's kind of like the fat filter. So if you eat a really fatty diet, like a lot of times on a CT scan, if somebody that has a fatty diet, you can actually see the fat on their liver. It's pretty, pretty amazing actually, like what the heck is that? And it's fat. And also around the heart too. It, it, um, during open heart surgery, they you know they actually have to sometimes cut layers of fat off around the cardiac muscle to get to the vessels. It's pretty amazing. You're like, oh my goodness, you know that's so you are what you eat. <laughs> um, also by um, doing uh, your if you have a lower metabolism. metabolism and uh, that will uh, decrease, you'll have, um, oh my goodness, what was I trying to say? <laughs> um, can you go back? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Thank you. Auto time. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, decreased caloric consumption with inactivity, and then you'll also have increased waste products. So if you have a lower metabolism, that will, you're going to, those are going to hang, the fat, and the sugars will hang out in your body and be stored. So those are important things to think about as far as um, where you know what you're eating, your what you're doing with those calories, burning them or storing them. And um, the storage is fat and plaque in in your arteries. So it's another key component. And that's probably more than you ever wanted to hear about <laughs> with all that. This is some more Tahoe. This is the, that uh, same race weekend at the Nationals. But that was kind of a cool shot of the Nevada side of um, Heavenly there. During the summer, no snow. It's kind of like what it looks like right now, unfortunately, too. If they recognize those boats, I think that's uh, magic in the front there. Kind of looks like their sail. And I see Jersey Girl. Yeah, Jersey Girl. And Conway there, maybe. Chasing there. Yeah, with the bone in their teeth as usual. But um, again, they're out moving. You're burning those calories. And that's the main thing. So, like I was saying, before you start any type of diet or exercise, changing anything up, get a checkup with your physician. Um, or at least with the nurse practitioner or, or you know clinic, yeah, just depending. Nowadays, I mean, most people are able to get a primary doctor, but if you don't have one, at least go you know to a clinic and get your blood pressure and your lab work done so that you know what you're starting with. That's the important part. Um, as you're you know starting to exercise, you're not going to start running a 10k on your first day. Don't do it. You'll regret it. You'll have you know, so much pain the next day you won't want to do anything else. 
and you know, pick something that you like. You know, if you like yoga, do yoga, but maybe do it with you know different workouts and stuff like that. If you like Pilates or weightlifting, pick what you like. You know, it's that way it's fun. Keep it fun. You know, just do it. Like the, there's a lot of slogans. You know, the impossible is nothing. You know, there's you know all these ways of just kind of building up your you know positive energy towards getting out there and getting moving. And set some basic goals for yourself. Like, hey, I'm going to walk for 30 minutes three times this week. And if you meet that goal, you can you know that's something to write about. Like you achieve that. You'll find yacht clubs in some of the craziest places, and this was out on our way to the Death Valley, and there's actually a hot springs there at a campground, but there's, there's no boats. <laughs> Maybe they have land yachts or something like that. I was thinking about that. I was like, oh, I wonder if they do land sailing out there. That's pretty hot now. Yeah, um, but this is, yeah, out in the middle of nowhere. I'd never been there before. I hadn't even, you know, knew it was there. I just, did, just couldn't resist. Had to stop and take that picture. To see. Um, so, again, back to um, the diet component. Um, you want to eat a whole food diet, lean meat, lower your dairy consumption, and there's a lot of good resources, like the USDA has, a, you know, they, they change the food pyramid all the time. And now it's like a V instead of a pyramid. <laughs> and it's one of those things where you want to incorporate, you know, grains. Now, some people are gluten intolerant, so that's a new component. But there's a lot of gluten um, options and non-gluten options out there now. Um, Whole grain pastas, brown rice, again, those are your complex carbohydrates. And eliminating white grains from your diet, that would be the white rice, um, starches, things like that. Using olive oil or canola for your cooking, not, you know, half a pound of butter to cook, you know, some potatoes or something like that. Um, adding fresh fruits and vegetables. You should be, you know, averaging five to six servings a day of fresh fruits and vegetables. That's kind of like the basic, and that's that's always been pretty steady. Um, again, you're going to get macronutrients from that, and that's going to bring up your, you know, levels of iron, vitamin K, and vitamin C. Which that's going to be, you know, key components for um, your immune system. Uh, this is the California Poppy Reserve, again out in the desert. Now you think we never went sailing, we spent a lot of time in different places. This was amazing. This, uh, we've gone by there a few times on our travels and there's been no flowers. The last few years with the drought, it was like dust bowl out there. It was pretty, and this was one of those abundant, amazing years. There were cars everywhere. You can see them for miles, too. This is out in Lancaster. I don't know if anybody knows where that is, but it's, you know, again, the desert. Um, so, again, setting up some goals. Uh, get your gear ready the night before you go to bed. So when you get up in the morning, you know, you don't make your way to the computer and sit down in front of the computer. You get up, you put your running shoes on, you go for a walk. Or... You have your yoga mat there, and you've got, you know, your music going, and you just do it. And that way, nothing gets in your way. Again, this is also about time for yourself. You have to give time to yourself. I, I, I'm a, a, a defender of this because I am a caregiver, and I tend to, like, take care of everything else before I do anything for myself. And it's been hard because in this last, you know, five or six years I've really gotten involved heavily with work more than, you know, doing that. So it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. Um, also, just clear out your, you know, clear away the temptations. Fresh foods in your house, get rid of the, you know, the Cheetos and the sweet cereal. Don't even have that in your house. Get rid of the sodas, get rid of, you know, have fresh, you know, um, fruit there instead of a bag of chips bottled water or if you get you know you get a filter thing and that way you're drinking fresh water instead of sodas um also decreasing caffeine intake is a good component to think about because caffeine is a stimulant 
and a lot of us tend to um, overindulge in that, especially with things like Starbucks and stuff like that. Um, and then also write it down because then you can look back at it and say, "Oh, that's what I was doing." I mean, you know, and even if you get off track, to go ahead and look at it as like, "Oh, I did this," and then I stopped. What made you stop? So it gives you something to reflect on. It also, again, is that giving yourself time. You might recognize this gentleman. <laughs> we uh, we uh, did this rally. Um, we're in Paso Robles, and they have, what, four or five days of cycling. And you can do all these different rides. It's, it's, a, it's a really fun, the Great Western Bike Rally. It's a, a, neat, a neat event. And, um, but again, it's getting out and getting moving, doing it with friends. That was the, my whole thing, is that you can you know, get out and do stuff together to keep motivated. Um, the benefits of exercise. So balance, agility, and strength. That comes in handy with sailing. This is where you start seeing, like, oh, you're bringing up your game. You're able to grind faster because you're doing stuff not sailing-oriented because a lot of times if you try to go in and just do the sailing-oriented exercises, you end up with injuries. So a balance of your, um, you know, physical, you know, ability. Um, it's also going to, you know, you're going to be able to withstand staying out there on the water for four hours, five hours, ten hours. Races that last, you know, like Delta Ditch is a great example, 12, 14 hour race. Um, staying hydrated is huge. Don't let yourself get, you know, hyponatremic where you drop your sodium levels or your potassium levels. That's dangerous. So you want to, you know, balance water intake with, you know, like sports drinks or some kind of an electrolyte drink. And again, that rest thing. You do a big event, you go do the Delta Ditch. The next day, don't plan on, you know, going and doing another race or something like that. Give your body a chance to recover. And that goes for if you do just, you know, like a, you know, 10 mile hike. This was. I don't know, five mile hike maybe. <laughs> this is up in the Sierras, uh, Carson Pass, uh, going up to Lake Winnemucca. There's another lady you might recognize. <laughs> um, so getting started, again, do what works for you, whether you like to work by yourself. If you need somebody to just give you some pointers, there's tons of fitness coaches in our area. Like I said, we're really fortunate in our area we have good food, we have great weather, and we have resources. And so if you need that kind of support, getting out to a coach is a good way to do that. You know, they can give you, get you started at least, give you a, a base to build on. Going to classes, if you're already, you know, like a member of a gym or you just want to go drop into a class, go to it, get started. Because once you get those endorphins going, you're gonna feel good, you're gonna be like, yeah, this is one of those, like, I want to do that again, or you meet people that you like, and that's the other thing, or like-minded people, too. Um, again, they, you know, get moving, keep it simple, and um, basic equipment, you don't need to go and buy a thousand dollar treadmill, <laughs> you can just go walk West Cliff, or you can walk, you know, eat, you know, anywhere, basically, in this area. Um, this is the all women crew uh, for Magic. I know, I think pretty much everybody on that boat, and these gals are fit. They are, you know, they're active, and they do a lot of stuff, not just sailing, so. So again, different types of exercises that you can do. You can start with cross training, so that's build, doing a little bit of cardio, strength, training and then toning. There's, you know, some programs like um, Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, which we'll be getting to know this year through the Leukemia Cup. They have a program called Team and Training. And Team and Training is one of those things where they help you get ready for a triathlon. And I worked with these guys, and they were realistic too. They set it up so that you could do it on a weekend in the afternoon, and they would do like a four hour session and we'd all get together. It was motivating. 
they really kept us, you know, and they were also, you know, pushing us a little bit too, which was kind of great. Yoga and isometric exercises for core strengthening. And then again, endurance and agility is gonna come with time. That's, you're not gonna, if you don't have that right now, you gotta build up to that. So again, you're not gonna try to do a 10K tomorrow. You're gonna, you know, maybe walk a mile or two. Um, again, balance, you wanna do, you don't wanna just work one area of your body you want to work your entire body. So even if you do a 10 minute workout, moving everything, not just, you know, doing your legs. So if you go for a walk, you get done, do some stretching. Um, and build up. So you're going to be, you know, starting maybe with a 30 minute workout, get a good sweat going three times a week and just track your progress. See, you know, like you take your weight at the beginning of that and do that for say three weeks and see if you lose any weight or how you feel. Do you have more energy? Are you sleeping better? You also find that sleeping better comes with exercise because you have a good release of calories and you also are able to kind of relax too. It takes your mind off of the outside world. This is Echo Lake. This is about 8,000 feet up in the Tahoe area. This is what it looks like in the winter. Hopefully it's still like that when we get up there this year. Um, yeah, it might be thawed by now. Um, but yeah, this is another way. You just get out and get moving. You know, go for a hike in the snow. Go for a bike ride. Another little, you know, tidbits about exercise. So starting with some drills, get, you know, a routine. You don't have to make it complex, but just kind of, you know, basic going through your upper down to your lower body. Um, you can add cross training, cardio. May always make sure, you know, to mix it up. You know, if you're doing one thing, you know, say you go for a bike ride twice a week and you go for a hike once a week. That counts. Everything, every bit counts. A um, couple other things. The sun salutation is, uh, kind of a beginner workout in yoga, it really gets your circulation going because it makes you do a whole complete series of exercises like three to five times. And just by doing that, you get your circulation going for the day. That's why they call it sun salutation. You do it in the morning, builds up your circulation, and then you're able to face the rest of the world for the rest of the day. Adding meditation, if you're in a high stress job, meditation is a really great way to tone it down um, or just, you know, stressful world. Um, but, you know, even just five minutes, if you just pause yourself and pause your mind for five minutes a day, that's a good way. Um, again, the hydration and the breath, I keep emphasizing that. <laughs> I don't know how many people I take care of in the hospital that come in dehydrated. The first thing we usually do to somebody when they come through the ER, they're dehydrated, they get two liters of fluid. It's like almost a given unless they're, you know, fluid overloaded. But it, that's one of the most common things is dehydration. So I can't emphasize that enough. It helps your kidneys keep functioning because your kidneys do not like to be dry. And so, and then kidneys are your oil filters. They're the ones that are getting rid of that waste product. So you want to keep them happy. Also, hydration keeps your blood pressure in balance. You want to get hypotensive. That also affects a lot of your metabolism, electrolytes. Um, yeah. Ernie's been a mentor for us for, gosh, eight, nine years. Um, and he's kind of, he's a, you know, what we call an octogenarian, almost a centurion. He's going to be, you know, he's pushing a hundred. But, you know, this is, he was 91 and he won the nationals. And that is an inspiration to me. It's like, holy cow, you know, to be out there at 91, still driving the boat, you know, pushing, the, you know, his body physically. But that's how you stay fit. You, you have, our bodies want to be in motion. They don't like to be sitting around not moving. We're really a, a, a moving object. Um, just some basic workouts that kind of show an example of going from the 
uh, top to bottom or bottom to top in this case, where you're doing just like a series of um, deadlifts, leg raisers, skipping rope, push-ups, that's obviously upper body, squats, that's core. You're not only, when you do squats, you're also working your legs, but you have to keep your body tight. You can't just squat and like kind of hang there. Um, reaching lunges, again, that's working not only your legs, but you're also gonna have to keep your core in proper posture and alignment. Um, pelvic tilt, that's midsection, and then you can do some arm and leg raises. And those, again, that's like a whole core thing because you're having to balance yourself. This is more of the great Western bike rally. Yeah, those were, uh, and you know, all these folks here in this picture, I think, I'm not sure about the gal in the yellow in the middle, but I think everybody here was 40 and up. So, like for example, my friend Edie, she's now 85, or she will be 85 this year, I think, <laughs> anyways. She's still hiking, 84, okay, yeah, Dan knows, so. Um, but, I mean, she's an inspiration to me because she still gets out and goes backpacking, she still skis, she still hikes, you know, and she sails, and, and, and it's just the positive energy that that brings to her life is, you know, it's huge. I mean, that it keeps you going. Um, Another basic workout, this is a little more extensive. This would take you probably about 40 minutes. But again, with a five to 10 minute cardio warm up, walk around the block, you know, good fast paced walk around the block. 10 minutes of stretching. Again, you could incorporate your sun salutations into this. Doing three sets of sun salutations, that would probably get you pretty close to a 10 minute stretch. Um, ball squat. Again, that is your, the whole idea with the exercise ball, and I wish I would have brought my, my props with me. I threw them in the car and then got, forgot to bring them. Um, is that that's going to keep your posture. You want to keep good alignment whenever you're doing these isometric exercises because you don't want to have where you're off balance. That's how you get injuries. Um, again, the isos for the abs, the crunches, that's core. Dumbbell, your upper body, push-ups, upper body, bicep curls, tricep extensions, and then um, rows, that's again core and upper body or full body almost, and star jumps are full body. That's where you're going to come down into a ball. You basically start down like this, and then you just come up. <laughs> and so if you do 10 of those, you're going to get your heart pumping, and then cool down afterwards. <laughs> you definitely want to cool down. Um, this is in the snow again. Uh, it's, uh, I guess I was thinking of the winter theme or something like that. But you also want to um, be able to just keep moving. That's what I'm trying to emphasize. You know, again, you know, get out there, get doing what you like doing. Uh, just a couple other pointers. Um, proper form. You want to stand, you don't want to be a sloucher. You know, this is not good for your spine, it's not good for your joints. You want to stand, you know, with good, proper, you know, feet at, you know, shoulder width apart. You also want to have, you know, you know, that the nice alignment with your neck. You also want to make sure and keep your shoulders kind of rolled back. This is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those, I'm guilty. I do this sometimes, you know, when I'm tired, you know. And, and again, when you're sitting in a chair, proper alignment. A lot of us have jobs where we sit on a desk and a keyboard, and you wanna be able to adjust the height and make sure you use good ergonomics. Sit like the Buddha. <laughs> that's, uh, I know, I, I just learned that's uh, one way to kind of think about it. Get out, get in the water either on or in the water. Um, basic equipment. You don't, like I said, you don't have to go buy a thousand dollar treadmill. You don't have to buy, uh, what's those Nordic track things. You don't need that around here. People that live in Massachusetts where it's 14 below, yeah, they need their indoor exercise equipment. 
So um, just some basic stretch bands, dumbbells, light ones, unless you want to bulk up. For me, I start looking like you know Arnold Schwarzenegger if I start doing more than 10 pound weights because I just that's my genetics. Um, yoga props. So if you can't do that full, you know, down dog, don't do it. But you know, do a modified with props. Good shoes. If you're going to start any kind of walking or running, get good shoes. You avoid injuries. Um, there's a bunch of good footwear places, you know, little shops around here that will get you fitted properly. A basic exercise mat, yoga mats, 20 bucks, a good one. Um, and comfortable clothing. Those are just the basics. Uh, this is Nepali Coast. I thought, you know, you don't have to climb a mountain. You can just start in, you know, and build your way up. So don't be over you're overwhelmed by any of this. This is something you can do um, and achieve. Extra things that you can, you know, that you may want. Um, if you get into swimming, you're gonna need a swimsuit. If you show up at Simpkins without a swimsuit, they won't let you in the pool. Um, a goggles and a cap. Even for men, I recommend a cap because even though it's, you know, bromine mostly these days, it's still hard on your hair, and then plus you don't have the, you know, it doesn't tangle so much. Unless you don't have any hair, then it doesn't matter. <laughs> then you're going to go, you're going to swim faster. No you're, you're, you're streamlined, you know, long boats, the fast boat, right? Um, a bike and a helmet, obviously wear a helmet always, please, if you ride a bike. Um, you know, another thing, you know, music. If music gets you moving, use it. Um, a fitness tracker, nowadays they have all these, you know, the Fitbits and the, I don't know, I can't even keep up with all that stuff right now. Or just a pedometer, just to see how many steps you take a day, because that's calories. If you're already walking three, four miles a day, and you're, you know, then what can you add to it? Maybe you can put some swimming in there. Um, journal, that's another great way to kind of track your progress. Also, um, get with some friends. I, I can't emphasize that enough, but it's one of my, I like to do individual sports, but I also like to do it as a group. And then sunglasses and sunscreen. Protect your skin, protect your eyes, especially if you're outdoors a lot, you know, you can get, especially on the, if you get out in the snow. I've had sun blindness, like snow blindness, like twice, just for not wearing proper eye protection. And, you know, you want to protect your skin from, you know, the harmful rays. And, you know, protective clothing and skin, too. Stay, yeah, dress for the occasion, I guess, is the, whatever you're going out into. Um, that was on our little boat, <laughs> sailing out of the bay. Um, just to kind of, um, I don't know, in closing, um, you know, our health is what we make it. So it's your conscious decision by, you know, eating a balanced diet, getting some exercise and resting in between all that. Um, you'll have, you know, you'll feel better, reduce your stress, and you'll, you know, have a better, you know, outlook towards things. Especially in a competitive sport, it's good to have that physical and mental well-being. Um, your sailing will get better if you're physically, you know, improve yourself. So if you're, you know, not able to hike out, that's okay, you know, but at the same time, being able to move around on the boat, the boat is moving, you want to be able to keep, you know, in sync with it. Um, again, you know, we have tons of resources in our area. This is one of, we live in like the kind of a mecca for, you know, physical activity, the, you know, a mild climate, we've got a lot of, you know, places to go outdoors. If you smoke, please stop smoking, <laughs> please. In fact, I can, it's the, I, I call it job security, basically, uh, you know. Um, and if you, you know, are, do you feel like you're, you know, indulging in alcohol, you know, too much, decrease your alcohol intake. And 
most important, have a good time all the time. I think this was the uh, Maiden Santa Cruz suite. Yeah, yeah. We had, you know, 50 year old kids in these. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Those are the smiles. All right. Anybody have any questions? Um, anything, you know? Yes. All right, I'll start. Okay. Um, a lot of your lecture was kind of like Greek to me. Okay. Especially when you're talking about the exercises. It's like you need a translator. What, what were you talking about? The squats and then and balls and stuff? It's like, huh? Well, so um, in my references, there's a couple of resources for those workouts. So those workouts came from, there's a couple of, um, the Annapolis uh, Sailing School has a fitness program. But do they explain what? what yes, exactly they have they videos. Explain. They actually have videos you can follow along with. And that, so those were just kind of like highlights of some of their basic workouts. Um, so an exercise ball, I, I should have brought my props. I could have, yeah. you know, yeah. shown. But um, that is, you know, it's just a big beach ball, basically, but it's a heavier rubber that you can actually, like, sit on top of it and do and use it as a prop for exercise. So you can use it for dumbbell presses. You can use it. Wait, 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 stop. Okay. <laughs> What's a dumbbell press with a ball? Can you so, demonstrate? Um, well, if I had the ball, I could. <laughs> but, uh, so basically, you're going to put your back, the ball behind your back. You're going to be on the floor. And you're going to have a couple of weights on each hand, one in each hand, and you're going to do what we call press. So you're going to come out basically with your arms extended, not oh hyper extended, so that you because you don't want to injure yourself, just to a, a, a you know alignment, proper alignment, and you're going to come up with your back, and you're looking up and, at the ceiling. And your back's on the ball. Mm -hmm. And where's your butt? On the ground? Or no, you? your butt will kind of, you'll be like in a 90 degree angle. So the ball will be supporting your lumbar section. So okay. you're going to, yeah. And you're laying on the ball. You're laying on the ball, yeah. <laughs> and it, it's a, basically the option from a, what we call a bench press type thing. I don't know if you've ever seen like a bench or a weight bench where you're doing presses. Yeah. Well, instead of using a, you know, a regular, barbell type thing, you're doing it with light weights and trying to keep that isometric form at the same time doing multiple reps. So if you do 10 reps, which are 10 presses, and then you take a break, a 30 second break, and then do another 10, do three sets, that's your dumbbell presses. So if you so do- how do you figure out how much weight you should be using well, that's up to each individual. So for me, I will go with lighter weights. I don't, like, I, if I start using 10 to 15 pound weights, you bulk up. I bulk up. So I don't want to bulk up. I want tone and I want the movement. I want to be able to, you know, just get that, the, the sweat going. But at the same time, the resistance that the weight offers is going to help you build tone and strength. You're just not going to be doing a 300 pound bench press, you know. I, I don't have any interest in lifting 300 pounds, so. Yeah. No, and, the, the yeah. conventional wisdom is to uh, go ahead and start light and work your way up to where you can do 12 of whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. And then that, that's a good way. And eventually you'll be able to take the next step up and do 12 of the next higher way. Okay. Yeah. But, so how do you know you're saying your body three, will know if you're three doing sets of it. twelve yeah. and you can't barely finish the last one. That's kind of where you're at. Yeah. Right. So that's, yeah. That's so what I at. like, I usually like, I just have some even like some one pound wrist weights, yeah. and that just using those to start with, just for the resistance that you get from the weight. So the whole concept of weightlifting is that you're have your body's having to push more than what is hanging on your bones. So your body's used to carrying your what you have on your bones. By adding just an incremental amount of weight on there, you're 
increasing the blood flow for one because you're having to push more. You're having to bring that that extra weight up. So the body sends more blood flow. You burn calories. Yes. Also, if you're if you're balancing on a ball, your your knees are like in a right angle. Yeah. So your your butt is kind of. Yeah. And you're engaging those muscles, too. Yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, so you're, gonna, you're doing this while you're balancing on a ball, too. Yeah. So it gives you some core. Yeah. 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 I mean, I do the total fitness thing, and I watch these guys balancing on the ball. Well, it's kind of nice, but what's it doing for you? Try it. it it's it's <laughs> actually what it does is it makes you, you have to keep yourself stable. So you have to engage your lower body because you're working, you're focusing on this part that's moving, yeah. but you have to engage all those other muscles to stay there in that position. So if you just lay on a bench and just move your arms, you're not having to really do anything with the rest of your body. And that's where the whole exercise ball concept came in is it's making you keep your tone and your posture. And, you know, because if you don't keep your posture, you roll off. <laughs> it seems like if you're going to do a workout and you get, I mean, you're trying to exercise various groups of muscles, uh, and so you're going to get around to all if you do a, a full workout. Mm -hmm. So why bother with the, the ball? Well, the ball gives you the ability to get your body, so what ends up happening is your legs are in a 90 and you're holding yourself there, and so you're able to get that extension. If you just lie on the floor and do that, you won't get that, the, ex the opening up of the, you know, your muscles in your chest. And your pectorals won't get that resistance exercise if you just lie flat. Yeah, even just like rolling on the ball kind of engages and stretches a bunch of core muscles. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to do any of it. And it builds you know, balance. Or something. Yeah, I'm and then the balance. Myself, <laughs> well, and yeah, so that and the whole thing too that's good with the ball exercise is, is the balance space. component because you have to. It's a you, you're kind of on this thing that's not really stable. Well, what what isn't stable? You know, when you're out on a boat, everything's moving all the time. So it's it's a good way. Um, it's also, you know, it adds something to it. You can mix it up. You don't have to do that all the time. You do that once a week, and then the other day, you know, the other days you go and you swim, you know, for half an hour, or you go for a hike for half an hour. Just that that way, it's, it's just suggestions. There's a lot of different ways to um, get those workouts in. Yoga is another great way. Pilates, or, but even in Pilates, well, it's Pilates. Pilates is kind of like the new wave version of like a jazzercise class or something. So it's like, it's I mean, ice jazzercise ice. is always high impact, high, fast, 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 high impact, yeah, it's lots more, of reps. Yeah, it's more of an isometric where you're doing resistance and you're doing a mix of exercises where you're getting that again, that you're working all parts of your body and focusing on core. Because core strength is key. If you don't have good abdominal strength, then you end up with injuries where you're not able to support the rest of your, you know, your peripheral muscles. Does Pilates use props? Or? They do. They have. They even have machines too. So Pilates is, is you know, again, that's kind of good. You go into a class, you can try it. Well, no, because Pilates charge. I always wanted to the free classes. You know, well, you yeah. Say it right. <laughs> Well, you could, they, a lot of places will offer you like a first free class, though. And then, you know, go check it out. And then, you know, it, but again, that's what I'm trying to emphasize is find what works for you and what you'd like. Because if it's, if going to a class isn't your thing, you're not going to keep doing it. You got to do the things that you like to do. And it's just that getting, the keeping your body moving, and not, you know, being sedentary is huge. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.